the Renaissance. The word Renaissance means rebirth. A number of things can be attributed to this rebirth. First, a number of people who lived in Italy where the Rena Renaissance began believed they had witnessed a rebirth of antiquity or Greco-Roman civilization, marking a new age. To them, the thousand or so years between the end of the Roman Empire and their own era was a middle period, hence the Middle Ages, characterized by darkness because of its lack of classical culture. Although contemporary scholars do not believe that the Renaissance represents a sudden or dramatic cultural break with the Middle Ages, the Renaissance can still be viewed as a distinct period of European history that manifested itself first in Italy and then spread to the rest of Europe. Italy, where the Renaissance was initiated, was largely an urban society. As a result of its commercial preeminence and political evolution, northern Italy by the mid-14th century was mostly a land of independent cities that dominated the country districts around them. These city-states became the centers of Italian political, economic, and social life. Within this new urban society, a secular spirit emerged as, as increasing wealth created new possibilities for the enjoyment of worldly things. The Medici family is a family of prominence in Florence, one of these northern city-states. Above all, the Renaissance was an age of recovery from the calamities of the 14th century. Italy and Europe began a slow process of recuperation between, from the effects of the Black Death, political disorder, and economic recession. This recovery was accompanied by a rebirth of the classical culture culture of classical antiquity. Increasingly aware of their own historical path, Italian intellectuals became intensely interested in the Greco-Roman culture of the ancient Mediterranean world. This new revival of classical antiquity affected activities as diverse as politics and art and led to new attempts to reconcile the pagan philosophy of the Greco-Roman world with Christian thought, as well as new <clears throat> ways of viewing human beings. As a revived emphasis on individual ability became characteristic of the Italian Renaissance. A high regard for human dignity and worth and realization of individual potential created a new social ideal of the well-rounded personality or universal person who is capable of achievements in many areas of life, or the Renaissance man. These general features of the Italian Renaissance were not characteristics of all Italians, but were primarily the person the preserve of the wealthy upper classes, which constituted a small percentage of the total population. The achievements of the Italian Renaissance were the product of an elite rather than a mass movement. Nevertheless, indirectly, it did have an impact on ordinary people, especially in cities, where so many of the intellectual and artistic accomplishments of the period were most visible. Italian Renaissance Society the Renaissance inherited its social structure from the Middle Ages. Society remained fundamentally divided into three estates. The first estate, the clergy. The second estate, the nobility, whose privileges were based on the principle that the nobles provided security and order. And the third estate, which consisted of the peasants and inhabitants of the towns and cities. This social order experienced certain adaptations in the Renaissance. Due to the losses of the 14th century, the power and numbers of the nobility had declined severely. During the Renaissance, this power was resuscitated. Members of the old nobility survived, while new blood infused its ranks. A reconstruction of the nobility was well underway by 1500. As a result, the nobles, both old and new, who con constituted only about 3% of the population, managed to dominate society serving as military officers and holding important political posts as well as advising the king. Increasingly during the Renaissance, members of the nobility pursued education as a means to maintain their role in government. By 1500, certain ideals became to be expected of the aristocrat. These are best expressed in the Book of the Courtier by Baldassare Castiglione. First published in 1528, Castiglione's work soon became popular throughout Europe and his work remained fundament, a fundamental handbook for European aristocrats for centuries. In it, Castiglione describes three, the three basic attributes for the perfect courtier. First, nobles should possess fundamental native endowments, such as impeccable character, grace, talents, and a noble birth. The perfect courtier must also cultivate certain achievements, 
Primarily, he should participate in military and bodily exercises because the principal profession of a courtier was bearing arms. But unlike the medieval knight who had been required only to have military skill, the Renaissance courtier was also expected to have a classical education and to adorn his life with the arts by playing a musical instrument, drawing, and painting. In Castiglione's hands, the Renaissance ideal of the well-developed personality became a social ideal of the aristocracy. Finally, the, arist the aristocrat was expected to follow a certain standard of conduct that replaced the outdated chivalry codes of the Middle Ages. Nobles were expected to make good impressions while being modest. They should not hide their accomplishments, but show them with grace. Peasants made up the overwhelming mass of the population of the non-noble, non-clerical class and continued to make up about 90% of European population, except in the highly urbanized areas of northern Italy and Flanders. The most noticeable trend produced by the economic crises of the 14th century was the decline of the manorial system and the continuing elimination of serfdom. The reduction of the peasantry after the Black Death simply accelerated this process. Since lords found it convenient to deal with the peasants by granting them freedom and charging rents, the lord's lands were then tilled by hired workers or simply rented out. By the end of the 15th century, serfdom was declining in Western Europe, and more and more peasants were becoming legally free. In towns and cities of Western Europe, the merchants and craftsmen became the burghers, or the bourgeoisie, an emerging middle class. The gap between the bourgeoisie wealth and peasant wealth had widened considerably. At the top of urban society in Renaissance Italy were the noble merchants, whose wealth from capitalistic enterprises in trade, industry, and banking enabled them to dominate their urban communities economically, socially, and politically. Below them were the burghers, bourgeoisie, or middle class. They were the shopkeepers, artisans, and guild members, who were largely concerned with providing goods and services for local consumption. Below these two groups were the propertyless workers, earning pitiful wages and the unemployed, living squalid and miserable lives. These people constituted 30 to 40 percent of the population living in cities. But even this large group was not at the bottom of the social scale. Beneath them were slaves, especially in Italian cities. Agricultural slavery existed in the early Middle Ages, but had declined for economic reasons and had been replaced by serfdom in the, by the 9th century. The catastrophic 14th century, however, led to a shortage of workers, which many Italian nobles responded with a mass reintroduction of slavery in the second half of the 14th century. In the Italian city, slaves were used as skilled workers, making handcrafted goods for their masters or as household workers. In Florence, wealthy merchants might possess two or three slaves. Often men of the household took slaves as concubines, which sometimes led to a major problem of illegitimacy. Slaves for the Italian market were obtained primarily from the eastern Mediterranean and Black Sea region that included Tartars, Russians, Albanians, and Dalmatians. There were also slaves from Africa, either Moors or Ethiopians, or Muslims from Spain. Because of the lucrative nature of the slave trade, Italian merchants, especially the Venetians, became involved in transportation of slaves. By the end of the 15th century, however, slavery had declined dramatically in the cities, Italian cities. Many slaves had been freed by their owners for humanitarian reasons. Probably the biggest reason, however, was the Black Sea, Black sea slave markets closed to Italian merchants after the Ottoman Empire seized control. Nevertheless, as one slave market closed to Europeans, another opened up. It was during this time period that the Portuguese had begun the Atlantic slave trade from the West African coastlines.